Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll reconvene to open session. Request that uh, council report out on closed session. Uh, the board uh, met in closed session uh, pursuant to government code section 54956.9 to consider the industrial disability retirement of employee Robert Ferry. Uh, there was no action uh, taken on that particular item. It is subject to approval in public session on tonight's agenda. The uh, board also met uh, uh, in closed session pursuant to government code section 54957.6A uh, uh, to with its designated representatives regarding uh, safety senior management and non-safety senior management. The designated representative was uh, Fire Chief Kurt Hankey. There was no action taken. All right, thank you, Council. Now we'll move to our action items. Action item number one, we have a resolution for industrial disability retirement. Battalion Chief Robert Ferry. Chief Walls, do you care to come to the podium and give us our presentation? Good evening, directors, um, okay. board clerk Tilson, Chief Inky. Um, yes, tonight, um, just uh, we need to vote on the resolution um, in regards to Battalion Chief uh, Rob Ferry. And uh, we'll go ahead and if you'd like to uh, conduct the vote. All right. Uh, so Chair move. Call the motion and second. a second. Call the roll, ma'am. Who was the motion? Uh, uh, Director Gould moves stack recommendation. And... Director Newcomer, the second. Roll call. Uh, Director Monk? Aye. Gould? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Borzali? Aye. Newcomer? Aye. Scheidegger? Aye. Clark? Aye. Pearson? Aye. Jones? Aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you very much. Okay, good evening, Director. Thank you. All right, now we'll move on to President's report. I have two items. One is that I did attend the Rancho Cordova Council and Staff Leadership Retreat, along with uh, Chief White. Very informative, very constructive interaction with uh, uh, elected members and staff from the city of Rancho Cordova. Uh, again, very productive, very informative in terms of getting into the nuances of economic development and priorities and goals for their city for the future. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, the city of Rancho Cordova for inviting SAC Metro to participate. The uh, second item I have is uh, a fellow, a member of our, um, a member of our fire family, uh, battalion, retired battalion chief Chuck Dunham passed away recently. And I would like to have a moment of silence in his honor at the close of our meeting. He was a uh, battalion chief for the uh, city of Sacramento and approximately 30 years of service here to the community. A uh, great fellow and he's uh, greatly missed by all his friends and family. Okay, and with that, we will move to the next item, which is the fire chief's report. <clears throat> President Joan, board of directors. Uh, first off, I received a thank you letter from fire chief Chris McGranahan from the Herald Fire Protection District. Uh, we donated several 800 megahertz radios to their district that were old radios of no use to us. Uh, their district is a southern part of Sacramento County um, and has quite a bit of uh, economic problems and, and was unable to buy the radios uh, to be able to communicate with us on mutual aid uh, and those types of things. So ourselves, along with some of the other fire departments, Sac City, uh, Consumers, and Folsom uh, donated a, a group of radios and we received a nice thank you letter for that. Um, also, we received a thank you letter from Robert Sanger, Executive Director of the Folsom Cordova Community Partnership, thanking the members of Metro Fire that participated in the Christmas in Cordova program. This toy distribution event provided over 3,600 toys and gifts to 1,648 children up to the age of 17. I want to thank you to our Community Services Division and to everyone that contributed to this worthy program, your generosity will be long remembered by the recipients of your donations. On the 27th of January, I also had a monthly meeting with uh, Rancho Cordova City Manager Ted Gabler. Uh, of that uh, discussion and lunch, a lot about uh, redevelopment. Uh, on that uh, issue, um, we received a letter uh, from the uh, county 
uh, assigning as us as the largest uh, district, independent district in Sacramento County. So we will have a seat at the table uh, of the seven person commission for Sacramento County redevelopment areas, for the Citrus Heights redevelopment areas, and for the Rancho Cordova redevelopment areas. And that seven member panel, we will represent all special districts in Sacramento County. Um, I have not come up with a recommendation to the board yet on, on who we should put there, but I believe my recommendation is gonna be along the lines of putting somebody that has a lot of redevelopment and financial experience, because they're gonna be talking about long-term debt, how that's gonna be paid off, how that tax increment's gonna come back, and how that, that gets split up amongst the, uh, the seven parties. Um, I attended on the 28th the Guns and Hoses football game at Hornet Stadium at Sac State. It was nothing less than impressive as, we, as our guys and gals ran a no-huddle offense for four quarters. Even though in the fourth quarter when we were wishing they would burn the clock and huddle up. And uh, I would say that uh, we, we crushed them. Uh, Director Kelly was there, Deputy Chief Wells, uh, Director Scheidegger. It was uh, just a great thing to see the firefighters who, when you see the police on the other side of the line and sheriffs, there must have been 70 or 80 of them, and we looked like a fraction of the amount of people compared to them. But we ran that classic West Coast offense, and it was just an impressive game, and we just thoroughly crushed them. And I'm glad I'm in a car in uniform going home tonight because they'd probably stop me after that shellacking. <laughs> so anyways, congratulations to all our people that uh, participate in that. Somebody said on the news they raised over a million dollars, I think, uh, for charities. Um, so uh, hats off to both the fire and the police and sheriff. It's a group effort from both sides, uh, and, uh, and both sides played well, um, though they did give some cheap shots. All right. <laughs> Uh, staff, as uh, Director uh, President Jones talked about, attended the Rancho Cordova City Council and Staff Learning Retreat. It was a two-day event. I also heard that it went well. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to make that, but uh, we continue our long and great relationship uh, with Rancho Cordova. Um, staff and members of the board attended the SAC Metro Chamber 20th Annual State of the City Address. Um, it was interesting and uh, really talked about uh, the Sacramento region um, and, and where it's headed. Also on the 31st, uh, uh, Chief Aaron attended the Sacramento uh, Fire Communications meeting. Uh, nothing of substance to report from there. On the 31st, uh, I had uh, lunch with uh, Brad Hudson, the Sac County Exec, and talked about uh, issues of commonality. Um, redevelopment was one of them. Uh, one of the big issues uh, the County Exec is very, very interested in doing is modernizing. Um, our plan checking capabilities, both at the county level, and, and that's one of the things we want to do here in our fire prevention division, but it's really about improving that economic climate for the developers and business owners that want to put businesses into our region. Uh, the more accommodating, uh, while following the law, the more accommodating that we can be in, in streamlining those processes, whether it's through digital plan checking or those types of issues, the quicker we can get building and construction back on track in this, uh, this region, and that's gonna lead to eventually strengthening our economy. So really a lot of it was talk about modernization, reaching out, public communication, and the different stakeholders that it affect, affected, and also the fact that we are there uh, their, their fire department uh, for the county. And really, when you take a look at it, we cover the largest area and uh, very positive. At noon today, uh, um, I obviously wasn't uh, gone to the trip to Israel, but I would report that uh, Larry Davis, uh, Deputy Chief Wells, Assistant Chief Holbrook, um, Chief Wagner, and am I missing somebody else? Is it? Yeah, you weren't there. Wells wasn't there. It was Holbrook, Davis, Wagner, and uh, I'm missing one other. Aaron. Aaron. Oh, Dwayne Aaron. Um, well, he's not going to like that. Uh, they're not here tonight because they're all at home asleep because they had a 40-hour uh, trip. Uh, the Israelis went on strike. They couldn't get out of the airport. Um, and uh, so for 40 hours, they have traveled around the Western and Eastern Hemisphere and everywhere else, eventually landing in lovely Newark, New Jersey, sometime yesterday evening, and then eventually made it home. But I'd like to say that Deputy Chief Holbrook and uh, uh, Larry Davis were both at work, and uh, after a scolding, they went home where they will 
rest up. But it was a productive trip on the issue of the simulator and it uh, didn't sound like they got a lot of sleep over there. I think I talked to them once and their work days were uh, long. And, uh, but it's gonna be very, very beneficial to us. And at the end, the biggest point that was made to me was, it was a good thing we went there because there needs to be a lot of modifications to fit what we need to do on a regional basis. And it's kind of hard to communicate with people halfway around the world about what the needs are that you're buying here. And again, that was all covered for by the grant. And uh, uh, so we're looking forward to moving that progress, that process forward. Um, I also uh, was in Roseville on Monday to welcome reception for their new fire chief, Marcus Reed. It's a new fire chief, came out of Tualatin Valley in Oregon. Um, uh, and uh, I attended that with uh, Assistant Chief uh, Walt White and Assistant Chief uh, Cockrum. Uh, on the 10th, uh, or excuse me, tomorrow morning, February 10th, tomorrow evening, uh, 4 p.m. Crest Theater, we have the graduation for our latest round of uh, Fire Academy graduates for Metro Fire. Um, I, I hope the directors can attend. Um, all of the senior staff definitely will be there. And uh, it's an exciting event. It's from four o'clock to six o'clock in the evening and that's at the Crest Theater. And I believe we have 22 or 23 uh, um, young uh, men and women that are gonna be graduating from that. I'll be attending the approval authority meeting tomorrow as well in regards to uh, grants uh, with the, what they call the big five um, here in Sacramento County where we divvy up the uh, uh, grant funds that come in through, I think it's just Gap and Homeland Security and so on and so forth. Um, our offices uh, will be closed on Monday, Monday February 13th, um, and uh, which is Lincoln's birthday, and on Monday, February 20th, Washington's birthday, um, that I'd like to let you know that uh, uh, senior staff and myself will be here on Monday because we have some meetings and stuff that we're taking care of, and not everybody else shares that holiday, so we'll be working with uh, Calima on some meetings and things as well. Um, one new thing on the 17th, I talked to um, Supervisor Susan Peters. They have a group that put together a, um, some of the big businesses and uh, private sector people as well as government people. They're doing a $100,000 study on the new economy for the Sacramento region. I felt that it was important uh, uh, that we participate in that. So for a, a donation to that, we basically got ourselves on, on the seat of, of that committee to be able to participate. And they are gonna be studying about new economies, new types of jobs, how they're gonna get the region uh, fired up for business to come in. Uh, they're working with SACOG, they're working with a bunch of different stakeholders in there. I didn't bring the, the uh, uh, list with me, but I'll make sure it gets out to the directors. Um, I put it out for uh, directors uh, if they would like to participate. Um, I've, I've talked to uh, Director Orzali and, and, and Scheidegger uh, about that. Um, I don't know that they're going to have room for a whole bunch of people and Director Kelly, but I think it's important that we have a seat at the table when they're talking about the regional redesign of how we bring business into uh, this region. Uh, the public sector, uh, through the loss of property tax and sales tax, even in regards to the cities and stuff, not so much with us, has been gigantic, and that has stretched the ability to provide services. And when you're going to meet with the business community out there that's going to be making decisions and recommendations on what we need to do to the future, I think as a fire chief that this district needs to be involved in those discussions, much the same as CAP the CAP and the rest of that. So that's one of the things that we'll be participating in um, coming up and uh, uh, keep you appraised and and. For my edification, I'm planning on going maybe the first couple times, but I really thought it was more the elected officials that really have the impact uh, from the board. Is, is this uh, by any chance the next economy? The next economy, correct. I'm sorry I misspoke on that. So um, I mistitled it the next economy. I was reading my lines here. Uh, yeah, and I think it's uh, in public CEO today uh, that's a st uh, statewide uh, a web page. Susan Peters had a very nice article about what the Sacramento region is trying to do, quite frankly, taking some of it off of what New Orleans did in regards to how they tried to re restart the business community and what they needed to do. And clearly in California, Sacramento is, is struggling. So I, I think it's an important thing that we participate with those business sector uh, uh, people and other public sector uh, officials. 
Um, fill the Boot, Firefighters Burn Institute is doing the Fill the Boot uh, February 18th to uh, February 20th. <clears throat> The Chiefs Challenge, which we, we won the last two years in a row, is Saturday, February 18th at 9 a.m. That's where I stand out with a boot, uh, normally pre-stuffed by Metro Senior Staff and myself, so that you have a little head start, uh, because we don't want to give up that trophy and have it leave our lobby. And it's all about how much money you raise uh, in that boot uh, and turn in. So I'm going to be out there, and uh, uh, I'm going to have family with me, and we're going to go out there and try to raise money. And uh, minimum contribution from senior staff of $500 a piece would be accepted. Uh, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, it's a very, very worthy event. It's about the Burn Institute. And listen, you know, we had, uh, so far, our guys and gals sign up slow. It's just the way it is out there. So like 5% of them have signed up. So I put a, a response out to that, that listen, we really need to get out there, and they do. Metro always comes through. Um, but we had some of our own people in the burn center this year. We had the firefighter that fell through the roof uh, and received very serious burns to his hands and the back of his head. Um, you know, so it's not just about the civilians out there and the children and people that uh, receive serious, serious burns and, and need that top level care. But it's our own people. So I really urge, uh, love to see the directors out there any of those days, the 18th through the 20th. Again, I'm going to be out there on February 18th. And uh, if you do come out there and you want to donate money and you don't want to be in the street, just look for me and stuff my boot and I would be happy. Um, as far as new hires, I have nothing to report. Uh, retirements, um, nothing to report. That's on my list. Pardon me? Yeah. That'll be for last. And then um, promotions. Um, effective January 31st, 2012, we promoted the following captains. Eric Rubacava, Greg Markell, Brian Thompson, Ross Carollo, Dave Ray, Andrew Whaley, and Mark Stern. And uh, so the uh, uh, continuing promotions uh, continue. It's a young department. A lot of experience going out at the top end. And uh, we'll be promoting another battalion chief, I'm sure, the first of next week with the uh, IDR retirement of uh, Battalion Chief Ferry as well. And last but not least, I know I recognized uh, before the Finance Committee and earlier, I really am honored and pleasured uh, again to present um, our new Chief Financial Officer, Rhonda McFarlane, who has just done a phenomenal job. Um, it's a privilege to be able to appoint somebody like that and know that the, that the district's finances the, the, the building of the finance division, moving the district forward, all those challenges that are there are in such capable hands. So, again, thank you very much, and uh, I think uh, the board already knows how well served they are, Rhonda, by you and, and your great, great staff, but I complimented them too much already. <laughs> so, anyways, with that, uh, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Chief. Are we going to have a uh, ops report, or we're going to uh, yes, pass? Yes, the tonight? operations report will be by uh, Assistant Chief uh, Cockrum. Good evening. Thank you, President uh, Jones, Directors. I got the uh, ops chief uh, report. I'm Scott Cockrum, Assistant Chief. I'm here for uh, Deputy Chief Holbrook. Uh, and EMS, uh, we had 200 and, or 2,008 dispatches and transported 66 percent of the time. AMR had 556 dispatches and transported 73 percent of the time. Uh, since the last time we met, we had 13 structure fires, which is in the last 14 days. I'll, I'll read a couple of reports of those. Uh, we had some great presentations today of some great things that happened. We have some more that are going to go along with today. Uh, this happened in Citrus Heights on January 16th at 11.21 in the morning. Uh, Citrus Heights police officers, Sholden and Copeland, responded to a report of a car that had fallen off its jack and onto the chest of a 50-year-old man working under the car, pinning him to the ground. Uh, these two officers from Citrus Heights showed up, found the, another jack in the garage, jacked the car up off of him, and drug him out. They found him unconscious and unresponsive. Uh, they went to start CPR, and he took a big gasp and came back to life. Wow. Um, our units came on scene, were able to transport him to the hospital. Um, uh, we wrote, uh, 
we worked with Citrus Heights, we got them, uh, did a press release, got some press out there, big story on that. The man that was, the 50-year-old man, his daughter was actually standing next to the car with a car laying on top of him, and he was telling her he was going to die. And then he went unconscious, and uh, fortunately we brought him back, and uh, uh, he was back to work just a few days later with some broken ribs. Uh, we wrote a very nice letter to um, Chief Boyd from Citrus Heights Police Department. They're going to be doing some honors for them you know, men later on in the year, and uh, that was a that was a great one. On February 2nd, on uh, 2.45 in the morning, cru crews responded to Grattan Way in the North Highlands area uh, to a home that had uh, literally exploded. En route to the call, the guys were notified that, they, that the residents and neighbors believed that there was some small children still in the home. Uh, when they arrived on scene, our crews aggressively searched the home like they do, fortunately finding no one there. However, this home literally did explode. The front wall blew out from the bottom off of its foundation. Glass and debris hit the house across the street, so it was a significant explosion. Our investigator determined that somebody had gone around, spread quite a bit of an ignitable liquid uh, a night ignitable liquid throughout the house, lit it on fire, somehow got away, and the, the, the vapors caused a pretty intensive in explosion inside the home. Uh, next, I'm going to go on to a story that actually just happened on Monday. This is a pretty you know, good one, uh, kind of an endearing story. Um, we're going to go, and I'm going to show you a quick video. And part of the reason I'm going to show you the video is because is it's got a many elements to it. This is uh, basically... Uh, just promoted Chris Seiler, Battalion Chief and Rescue 2166, uh, went to this scene and did a great <coughs> job. And this was on Monday. Let's see if we can get it up. It'll be about two minutes if we can get it to go, hopefully. Oh, I don't know if it's going to go. Ken, we're going to have to get it going. Oh. Might have timed yeah. out, huh? We're going to get this going. Uh, basically, on, uh, on Monday, we responded to uh, an incident of a deer in the canal, and uh, it turned out to be pretty good. Part of the story is, is, uh, is the social media aspect of what we're doing at community services and through the public information office. Um, and uh, let's see if we can get it going. There we go. Well, it was a canal rescue like no other, and today SAC Metro Fire had to use their skills and their training to rescue a helpless deer in the waters. Here's an emergency you don't see every day. Metro Fire units are on scene of a deer in the South Drainage Canal. <laughs> I thought it was going to get out. For a buck <laughs> stuck floating north along International and Sunrise. Crews keep track of the deer until units can get in place. Uh, so far he's been in about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, he's really struggling now, he's getting tired. The problem is the deer is floating by too fast. The timing has to be just right. And eventually crews get the buck to stop here. After more than an hour in the cold water, it takes at least five rescuers to haul in the exhausted animal by the horns. So that kind of helped us out actually, getting him a little bit tired out so that when we did capture him, uh, he was pretty exhausted. It was easier for us to get a grab on him. Then a crucial part of the operation, securing the wild animal for the trip to safer ground. They bring the deer to the river access area at the American River. Then the delicate removal of the deer, the ties. Finally, the blindfold. Then a brief wait for instinct to take over, which takes less than 20 seconds. Fish and Game says once out of the water, the deer was fine. Very healthy, very strong, and I think it's going to be just fine because he had, he had a lot of fighting spirit in him when we got to him, and he looks like he's heading off there with a lot of, still with some of that fighting spirit left in him. Yeah, he looked yeah, pretty strong after he woke up. That was it, really. <laughs> okay, so that was, a, that was a great news story. Yeah. But part of that, almost all of that video was shot by me with, uh, with an iPad. And uh, we were tweeting it. I know I uh, Director Kelly follows me on Twitter. And uh, we were tweeting it while we were on scene. So um, uh, that's where most of that video came from. It was great. I actually received a call yesterday from CNN out of Atlanta. They asked for permission that they could play it and then distribute it to all their affiliate agent, uh, uh, stations out. Um, you know, Brenda Briggs and I, we're working hard on, on social media. 
Uh, we've just linked Twitter and Facebook. Last, last board meeting, we basically tweet, tweeted a, a photograph of you guys with, uh, with the canine and the, and the rescue dog. And within a few minutes, we were setting up an interview for them. So uh, we're also working on improving our uh, web, website. That's a lot of work. There's a lot of effort that goes with that. And uh, Molly Myers is helping with that. She's also an operations secretary. So everybody's doing their part. It uh, just takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to do all this stuff. But Brenda's doing a great job helping me with all the social media and getting our message out there and getting it out as quick as we can. This, uh, this type of uh, piece is pretty positive, and the media is really excited about this next step I've taken from going just from photographs on the Twitter to, to videotape on Twitter. So that's real good. So if there's no questions, that's the end of my presentation. Mike can report. Thank you, Chief. I Thank think you. you should tweet that uh, Chief Hanky Metro Fire talks smack on uh, yeah. <laughs> on the uh, guns and hoses bull. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the route he'll be taking home. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> Do we have a general counsel's report, sir? Uh, no report. Okay, no report. Uh, local 522 comments? Here we go. President Jones, fellow directors, Chief Hinky, Chuck Ingram, Local 522 Metro Director. Uh, Chief Hinky said a lot what I was going to say today. I'll just, uh, but I do want to say thank you to the Finance Division, um, Smith Farland, uh, Maria, and 522 members that are helping put this district on the right path. And I feel um, that we're, we're getting there and we're moving forward with a lot of help from uh, the local cooperation with the administration. We really um, are working well together and, and um, both sides see where we need to go and we're getting there. So thank you. Uh, we do have an academy of 22 recruits coming, and they're graduating on Friday. And um, it's great to see um, the new probationary firefighters that did graduate and these new recruits. It's a breath of fresh air to see this influx of new kids coming in. I call them kids because I'm kind of old. But uh, it, it's nice. It reminds me. I, yesterday, I worked with a kid um, who was with my son in high school. So it's really neat to see the, the, infu the excitement and uh, the motivation and dedication that these uh, recruits are bringing to our department. They will be our future leaders. Um, the guns and hoses, yes, we did win, and that, that was good for the firefighters. Uh, fill the boot, uh, the kickoff is this Saturday at 10 o'clock. We invite all the directors and uh, staff to come and uh, see what we do out there. And next it's, Saturday. You mean next Saturday? Excuse me, Saturday, uh, the 18th. Thank Go you very much for the correction. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting my Saturdays mixed up. Um, so anyway, it's a, it's a fun event. It, the Firefighter Burn Institute is Local 522's charity, and we raise a lot of money um, at these boot drives, and it gets funneled right into uh, the Burn Institute um, to help firefighters and uh, civilians that are burned. So it's a good cause. There is a uh, crab feed coming up, uh, Firefighter Burn Institute crab feed coming up March 3rd. Uh, if any of the board of directors would like to go after the meeting, please see me, and uh, we'll make that happen for you. Um, on behalf of... Um, the local's president, Brian Rice, um, he would like to thank uh, Mr. Kruger, Tom Oliquin, and George Walker of PSC LLC for the generous donation um, of the Lucas device, and also thank you to them on behalf of the members of Metro Fire. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ingram. Next up, we have committee and delegate reports. Uh, the executive committee did meet tonight. And uh, we uh, had uh, Jim Newcomer go into uh, the Finance Committee and the 2 by 2 committee meetings. Uh, everything else stands the same. Uh, we might end up having to do a, a few little uh, adjustments to that, but if, there, if that does occur, we'll have another executive meeting and then bring it to the full board as well. Also, we discussed uh, different ad hoc committees, and uh, the consensus from the executive committee uh, if, if, I'm not sure if this needs to be consensus from the whole board or if we need to um, um, calendar it for the next agenda. But the consensus was that the executive committee work as the ad hoc committee, committee in terms of <clears throat> recruiting and gaining information and seeing about any particular consultants potential, uh, potentially for our 360 evaluation of the staff and the employees that the uh, board oversees. So uh, 
it probably, uh, if there's some discussion or any questions on that, then uh, we will agendize it for next meeting. But that was the consensus of the executive committee. Okay. Uh, Communication Center, JPA. I have no report. No report from that. Okay, thank you. California Fire and Rescue Training. Mr. Kelly. Uh, yes, the uh, Fire Rescue Training JPA has their meeting scheduled for uh, uh, two weeks from tomorrow, uh, the 24th, okay. at Calima's uh, uh, media room. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, number four, Finance Committee. We... Uh, met tonight and a, a few uh, catch-ups. Uh, um, we continue to have a, a little bit of a challenge with CalPERS and getting them to accept uh, some monies from us for deposit and therefore uh, to get invested. And so uh, I mentioned to the fire chief, I'm sure that he could call on any member of the board if there needs to be uh, letters or phone calls or any attendance at meetings in support of uh, moving the district's business forward with CalPERS. So I volunteered all of us, just to FYI on that one. And uh, one thing that was pointed out by our auditors was that they did six, six fiscal years worth of audits, over six fiscal years in 20 months, and we came out with a clean opinion on those years. That's a tremendous amount of work, a tremendous amount of effort, and uh, a plus for the site for Metro Fire at the end. So I wanted to acknowledge that work. It is it can be very dry, very time consuming, et cetera. But that's that's quite a kudo for that team to have accomplished. And finally, I'd like to say congratulations to uh, uh, Rhonda McFarland on her appointment for Chief Financial Officer. I look forward to working with her in the future. Policy Committee. The yeah, policy committee will meet on the 23rd at 5 p.m. and uh, we'll continue the process of uh, reviewing and modifying the district's uh, operational policies. Thank you. We'll be moving to board members questions and comments. Um, should we start on this side please? Director Pearson? Uh, I have no report today. Thank you. Director Scheidegger? Uh, go dogs. Uh, my only <laughs> disappointment was that uh, I showed up and volunteered and they said they don't need any old guys or directors. I, I was hurt. Um, I want to, uh, from the fiscal committee, finance committee, uh, cite the efforts of this department in their business sense and the uh, $2 million almost increase so far this year in terms of increased revenue with medic services. I, uh, I just can't say enough how important I think that is and what a fine tribute it is to our people. And then I also want to follow up with uh, Madam Chair's comment about the success of the audit. Uh, that's just good business for this department and uh, good work uh, on the part of our staff and assisting them and making it work in that time frame. Thank you. Director Newcomer. Uh, I too would like to, uh, I too would like to congratulate our new CFO McFarland. And I'd also like to congratulate our uh, new captain out, the captains out in the field, and uh, I'd like to thank all of the employees of SAC Metro Fire for what they do every day. Directors? I'd just like to comment on um, and congratulate both the chief and the, uh, and the staff on the unqualified audit findings. That's a, uh, uh, another one of those key indicators of the success in, in SAC Metro. And following on that, the adoption of a professionally done 360-degree evaluation for the employee staff uh, uh, of the board is another one of those uh, benchmarks that hasn't been done in the past. It's going to make a huge difference for us, and I appreciate everyone's support for the idea. Thank you. Dr. Monk? I'll just echo everything that's already been said so we don't tie up the microphone. And congratulations to those people promoted and to Rhonda for her promotion. That's it. Director Gould. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tonight, in consent, we approve resolutions retiring 43 members of our district. Quick calculations tell me that that's nearly 1,300 years of service. 
Uh, that takes your breath away when you think about 1,300 years of cumulative experience amongst that group. Uh, that's pretty telling. And thank you to all those men and women who uh, did the work that they did in such an outstanding job. Um, we also heard this evening testimony that this agency has lost over the last couple of years $40 million in revenue. And yet the lights are still on, and we're still meeting our response times, and we're moving forward as an organization. And I think that goes to the men and women of this board and to the staff and to the men and women in the street. It says that even despite some unbelievable challenges, we didn't close the doors and just wash our hands of it and went away. We're still here providing top-notch services that are second to none in the community. Uh, and that's, that's kudos to everyone that's been involved. And then finally tonight, we saw a rescue device that's been around for nearly two and a half decades. Uh, what you see tonight is really the evolution of something that's been around forever. And I hope that this community saw the statistic where we are nearly doubling our best efforts at CPR survival. It has become the piece of research that's changed the way we do business in the street. And I hope that the community at large follows the example of the team that came tonight and, and donated because it's the way we're going to get that device on every single ambulance and on every single first in ALS engine is by the partnerships in the community because this is the device that saves lives. Our men and women do an outstanding job, but with this tool, the survival rates go way up and you get to see more dames like we saw tonight. And they could be your grandmother or my grandmother or my daughter or my mother. And what a great thing that we could do to save their lives and give them another year. And they are not cheap, but they are life-saving. And so I hope that whoever's listening understands that we need your help with a $40 million reduction in our revenue. We need to have those partners step to the table and provide us with some of these tools that one day we may use on you. And so I hope that we get that done and we get it done in a timely fashion. And we adopt this Lucas device as a standard tool on life saving in this community. And then we will be, again, second to none in anywhere in the country or the world. So uh, kudos to everyone. Obviously, we're very proud of everything you do. Thank you very much. Director Kelly? Yes, uh, uh, Chief, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys tomorrow at the uh, graduation ceremony. I'll participate in that. And uh, I'll talk to you more about the next economy. I think that's an excellent uh, thing for the district to become involved with. I sit on a steering committee, and uh, it's, uh, they're going to come up with some good ideas. They're identifying occupation clusters that they uh, project to grow in the Sacramento region, and uh, they're trying to figure out how to draw uh, industry and, and, and others that are uh, able to help grow those those uh, industries in the Sacramento region. And certainly they're doing some things that uh, I haven't seen done in the Sacramento area before. So look forward to it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I have my ticket already for the Burn Institute crab feed. So get in line and let's eat some crab in a couple, or March 3rd. And uh, second, I would like to say thank you again to the city of Rancho Cordova for uh, offering us their boardroom in order for us to be able to conduct our business until our offices are ready. I would also like to congratulate again Mr. Brandon Green, Mr. Gary Kruger, Tom Poliquin, and George Walker for our civilian awardees earlier in the evening. And uh, congratulations to all the promoted individuals. And with that, I'd like for everyone to stand for a moment of silence for retired, the passing of retired fire chief, er, fire, the passing of retired battalion chief Chuck Dunham, Sac City Fire. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.